My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I have a couple of items to discuss from the latest tech news that it has been out and about in the world. And the first of which is regarding the iPhone X. Now, of course, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that pretty much every product ever has some kind of markup versus what it actually costs to produce versus what they actually charge. That's obviously how you make money. However, we've now learned exactly how much of a markup that the iPhone X has, and well, it's a bit ludicrous to say the least. And according to the engineers at the marketing research firm IHS Marquette, who cracked open the base version of the iPhone X, they estimated that the bill of the materials is roughly $370. So, in comparison to previous iPhones, they cost roughly $270 to make and they usually retail for around $600. So, despite the fact that the iPhone X only costs $100 more than its predecessors to produce, they are of course charging roughly $1,000 for the iPhone X. Now you might say, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty bad, but like, you know, how is it in comparison to their competitors? Well... Again, according to IHS, the Samsung Galaxy S8 with the 64 gigs of NAND memory has a bill of materials of $302 and retails for around $720. So you are still looking at basically double the price versus what it actually costs to produce. But I would argue that there's a difference between it costing $370 and retailing for $1,000 versus, yeah, this costs $300 and retails for $720. So the markup on this is, well, shall we say, a touch ridiculous, and they even provided a little bit of information on some of the parts and where they actually came from. So their teardown did reveal that the IR camera is supplied by Sony, while the silicon is provided by ST Microelectronics. The flood illuminator is an IR emitter from Texas Instruments, as well as a bunch of other stuff attached to that. And the bill of materials cost for the True Depth Sensor Cluster is $16.70. So, we also have a piece of information here from the Senior Director for MEMS and Sensors at IHS Marquette, Jeremy Bouchard, who says, quote, Apple's Face ID system is very similar in basic functionality to the old Microsoft Connect system of sensing, which used a flood illuminated dot projector and infrared camera. It's a complex assembly that uses components from many suppliers. So basically that just gives you a little idea of the different parts that came together to build the X, but it also goes to show you how exactly how much of a premium Apple is actually putting on their device. So yeah. That's pretty bad that they're ripping off their customers that much. Like, if it actually costs, like, I don't know, $600, just, just, just to throw a number out there to produce, it wouldn't be as bad to charge $999, but the fact that it costs only $100 more than their predecessors and yet costs, um, you know, almost double that of their previous models, it kind of goes without saying that that's, that's pretty bad to rip off your consumers that much. But uh, I doubt this is going to make a dent in their sales, to be honest with you. So, let's move swiftly on to our second item of discussion, which is actually regarding NVIDIA. As we have a apparent leak, thanks to the folks over at Heiser.de, as we have the name of NVIDIA's next generation GPU architecture, and according to this particular rumour, and again, rumour, just put that in flashing grey big neon that's the size of a house, it's going to be called Ampere. Or Ampere, I'm not exactly sure on the pronunciation. A M P E R E. Looks like Ampere to me, but it, you know it could be something else. I don't know. Anyway, so according to Heiser, they are planning to unveil this next gen GPU at GTC 2018. And according to rumors, Nvidia are going to be jumping straight from Pascal to Ampere for GeForce. So this kind of means that Volta is just going to be purely for the sort of server deep learning AI side of things and that we won't ever see a Volta GeForce card. But according to them, and again their sources could be wrong, they could be wrong, etc. All the usual stuff. 
they are going to, we are going to be seeing Ampere succeed Pascal rather than the expected Volta G force. Now, for those of you wondering, the next GTC is going to be taking place in April of next year. So we do have quite a while to see how true this rumor actually is. Now, no other details are mentioned, unfortunately, so we should be taking this with a pinch of salt. And of course, up until now, there has been no mention of Ampere, or Ampere, whatever, I'm not gonna get bogged down the pronunciation, on the roadmaps. Obviously, the roadmap has definitely shown that it is going to be Volta replacing Pascal, but perhaps there's a reason that they could be keeping this hidden. I mean, maybe this is going to be after Volta and Heiser have kind of got their wires crossed somewhere. Perhaps their information is wrong. All we know for now is that this is what they're alleging is going to happen. Now, it would seem a bit strange for Volta to just never show its face in the G-Force side of things and to only be in their deep learning AI markets. But NVIDIA have kind of done this stuff before. As even with Pascal, we had the GP100, which never made its way to the consumer market. Whereas, of course, we had several variations of Pascal reach the hands of consumers and of course we had Kepler as well and they all had different specs which were designed to meet the requirements of the market and obviously a big sort of selling point of Volta is obviously the tensor core and you could argue that is there really need as much need for that probably expensive tech on the consumer side that sort of thing but I don't know it does seem strange to me that all of a sudden this mention of Ampere has popped up with no mention of it on roadmaps or anything like that. You know, it could be, again, that it's succeeding Volta, not Pascal, and that we won't be seeing it again for ages, or it could be that they have the right of it, that Volta just will never see the light of day in GeForce, and that we're going to be seeing this brand new architecture take the helm. Still, it's an interesting rumour, to say the least. And of course, unfortunately, all we can do is wait and see because Nvidia obviously aren't going to comment. They're going to, if they reply at all, it's just going to be no comments because, well, why would they? So unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait till GTC to see how true this is. I am skeptical that this is true, to be honest with you. But weirder things have happened. I mean, the AMD Intel partnership is actually a thing that's happening. So, you know, I shouldn't scoff and be like, oh, this or, this is not a thing. <laughs> If, if anything has shown that anything can happen, it's the AMD and Intel partnership. So maybe a video is going to be like, surprise! And this is going to be what's happened, or it's going to be Volta, as we expect. Let's uh, just buckle it in for the long ride, because that's the only way we're going to find out exactly what NVIDIA have cooking for us once they're finally done with the Pascal architecture. With all that said, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to give us a like and subscribe, it does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time.